grandmother actually, Marlene, Auntie, uh, Mark Samuels. I want to pray for him. Ira Mills uh, was in the hospital not long ago. Don't know if Ira is still in the hospital. Need to uh, give Carolyn a call. And then Cindy Ghostin. We thank God for all of them. I'm straight now, Stevie. You're straight now? Yeah. Straight on. Oh, no, that's a different program altogether. Wow. I don't know why my thing's sideways there, though. <laughs> I know I did. Why not take it sideways? Okay. Uh, well, yeah. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. We're going to. No, we can get done. Bro. We're going to have a word of prayer here and get at it. Let's bow, everybody. God of Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for this time that you've given to us to uh, move in this book, this precious uh, piece of literature that we've been studying, Pilgrim's Progress Part 2, The Journey of Christiana. Uh, we just thank you for John Bunyan, the author of this book, and how you breathe through him all of your mind for him to pen. And Lord, we're still gleaning from it in this day and time, almost 400 years later. So we thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for the names that have been lifted up before you. We ask you just to show yourself mighty in their lives. Be gracious to each one. Uh, touch those who are struggling in their health. And the crown of their heads, the very soles of their feet, let soundness be in their bodies, we pray. Uh, Lord, we lift it up before you. Uh, many things uh, we would do ourselves if we could, but some things are so far beyond us. We have to come to you and ask you to minister to them particularly. And so, Lord, be gracious, we pray, in the strong and in the mighty name of Jesus. Do as only you can do in the lives of your people. Demonstrate your deep love for each one. And then we pray, oh God, that you give us an appetite to seek your face in, in prayer, in our personal de devotions. And then uh, give us a mind to fellowship frequently with the other believers. Uh, give us a mind to read your word, drink deeply from the wells of living water. And we'll be so very careful to give your name the praise. Go with us and stand by us now uh, as we uh, read through our lesson, as we lift up things that we think that might be a benefit to uh, our listening audience at, on Zoom and Facebook. And we'll be so very careful to give your name the praise. It's in Jesus' great and mighty name that we pray. Call it done. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. We're, we're up and running here. My dear wife is coming in. She's going to give us a selection, and we'll be uh, able to uh, move forward. Let me turn this off, because I'm you burn up if I don't. <laughs> Amen. All right. There we go. Okay. We're moving. We're moving. So good morning, everybody. The song that I woke up with this morning is He's Sweet I Know. When I think about how he woke, woke me up this morning and how he is uh, keeping me, then all I can do is praise him and say, he's sweet, I know. He's sweet, I know. He's sweet, I, I know. Dark clouds may rise, and strong winds may blow, but I'll tell the world yes, yes. wherever, wherever I go. I have found a Savior, and He's sweet, I know. I can't forget when I was sad, it hanging down. So feeling bad, all I could say was, Lord, take my heart. Jesus heard and saved me and gave me a start. Oh, he's sweet, I know. Mm, he's sweet, I, I know. Dark. 
dark clouds may rise and strong winds they're going to blow oh but i'll tell the world wherever i may go i have found a savior Here in my hand, I'm going to that beautiful land. Sometimes I weep, oh Lord, sometimes I moan. But I'm bound for glory, and I'm going, I'm pressing on. <laughs> He's yes. sweet, I know. Oh, He's sweet, I know. Dark clouds may rise. And strong winds may blow, but I'll tell the world wherever I may go, I have found a savior. So thank you. Thank you, Shirley. What a joy. My goodness. Wonderful, wonderful. All right. We're getting ready to launch. Let me just uh, acknowledge some people. Now, I had uh, Ruthie was on here a minute ago before anybody else uh, got on. So I want to acknowledge that my sister all the way from California by way of Kansas City. is <laughs> tuning in today. <laughs> tuning in today. Helen Ann Frazier, Octavia Carr, Barbara Ann Harrell. Amen. D.L. Lee pulling double duty. He's on Zoom and Facebook. Uh, Barbara Caldwell, Phaedra Phillips. Uh, let's see. Diana Scott. That's Daryl Sawyer, Montgomery. Hey, Daryl, how are you? Uh, Juanita McGill, Mama McGill, just got done speaking to her a little er bit ago. Diabra Crossdale Hines, way down in Texas. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, Denise Tucker. Now, Denise, I need you to uh, send me the name and address of your business because I have one of my church members that's in Augusta. So please, uh, I just texted her a few minutes ago that you guys have a restaurant uh, business down there. So uh, she wanted to uh, get the name and address. And so if you'll text me that, it would be wonderful. Amen. Uh, so he, uh, she can come meet you and your husband, Baruti, and see some of his artwork as well. Uh, let's see. Patrice Hammonds. Thank you, Tracy. LaVonda K. Jackson. Amen. Thank you, Vonda. Uh, and we're looking forward to Friday's prayer. Friday evening's prayer is going to be happening here at the church. Our prayer ministry will be meeting as we do before every fifth Sunday. We have a time of separating ourselves to prayer. So we want to be able to do that this coming Friday night. All right. As uh, soon as my reader get back, we're going to get started. Uh, hey, BB, I got you. 
We got BB. We got BB. <laughs> My engineer, way down in Augusta, Georgia. What's going on, BB? <laughs> that is so wonderful. We just arrived. We just arrived. Oh, good, good, good. Good. Matter of fact, my niece is tuning in to the broadcast today on Facebook, and uh, Denise Tucker down in Augusta. I told her to text me her uh, the address and name of her business. Wow. Okay. We are. <clears throat> We're getting ready to uh, move. One of the sweet things about what just is taking place in the narrative today is that they've had an opportunity. Uh, he, he, Stevie's asking you to come closer. To me. <laughs> an opportunity uh, to get uh, Rayhart to come and be with them in their journey, and that's a sweet thing because uh, we have a, a two women and some boys traveling on their way to. Uh, Celestial City, and of course they've already met with some dangers and the enemies already tried to upend them to bring destruction toward them, and they really do need uh, somebody to go along with them. And so they requested of the Lord that he would send Greatheart along with them. So we'll see that today where they're going to have some protection as they go along the road. Uh, I'm, in, I'm on page 291 in my book. Uh, no, it's not this one. I think it's the same page. I mean, I uh, have a note where we're talking about Nurse's Dream. Yeah, that's what, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're okay. in the same place. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We got our reader on cue. Let us, oh, I saw Ira Mills a minute ago, and I'm thanking God for him because he and Carolyn are at home, and we are grateful for that, and that, uh, that the Lord has been good to him. All right. Shirley's going to go ahead and start reading. Uh, well, I'm glad of my dream, she said. So that's where we're going to start today. And those of you who are going along with us, if you have a book or if you um, uh, looking online, that's where we're going to start. After Mercy and uh, Christiana and, uh, go up and sleep in Christian's bed, they come down and they talk about it. She had a dream, and so they're dialoguing about that. Okay. All right. That's where we are. Let's go. Well, I'm glad of my dream, said Mercy, for I hope before long to see it fulfilled to make me laugh again. I think it's now time to rise and know what we must do, said Christiana. Please, petition Mercy, if they invite us to stay for a while, let's willingly accept the offer. I'm most willing to stay here a while to grow better acquainted with these girls. I think prudence piety and charity have very attractive and serious appearances. So uh, I'm going to, okay, I had to look up prudence and piety and charity. Okay, yeah, sure, absolutely. Elaborate. I think prudence, that's the beauty of this. Prudence, careful judgment, uh, skill, um, good judgment in the use of uh, resources or cautiousness. Mm -hmm. uh, or careful judgment. You're taking your time and uh, making a good assessment of what's going on. And yeah. piety is the quality of being religious or reverence. Um, it's uh, fidelity to natural obligations, they say, as parents, or dutifulness in religion. Okay. I think that's probably what applies to us. Sure. And then uh, charity uh, is the organization or the generosity and helpfulness uh, benevolent goodwill towards or love for humanity. Mm -hmm. And I know that we've used the Bible uh, equates charity because it's the willing willingness uh, giving the um, giving of what you have to help somebody else. No, and help actually, I, you know, uh, uh, the outgrowth of that word is love in action. Because in the Greek text, charity and love is the exact same word. Okay. Agapeo or agape. It's the same word. So, uh, you know, when we think about someone being charitable, we're thinking about love in action. It's born out of a heart that God has created in us or given to us to love and have a desire to help in, 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 in terms of what God did for us because of God so loved the world, that, that same word. So, absolutely. Okay. Go ahead, babe. 
Um, okay, lost my voice. We'll see. We'll see what they want to do, answered Christiana. When they were up and ready, they came down and asked one another about their rest and whether or not it was comfortable. Very good, said Mercy. It was one of the best night's lodgings that I've ever had in my life. Then Prudence and Piety said, if you'll be persuaded to stay here a while, you'll have what the house can supply. Mm. Yes, and gladly, said Charity. So they consented and stayed there about a month or more being profitable to one another. And because Prudence wanted to see how Christiana had brought up her children, she asked her permission to question them in order to teach them doctrine. Um, the notes in the, in the, in the uh, footnotes to this, uh, they said that she wanted to question them. And they said in the old um, um, Don, John Bunyan, they, they said catechize, mm -hmm. which is to you know, ask them questions about what they believe. Sure. But in the newer translations, they, they presented like, because nobody uses that word hardly anymore, mm -hmm. catechize. So uh, it was just to teach them or ask questions, and so they used other words, but it's kind of like that's what they were in the old, <laughs> in the old language. <laughs> yeah. okay. That's a good thing, though, right? Yes. Oh, it's, yes. A, it's a great thing to catechize, to ask questions, to find out where people are. A lot of times in our faith, uh, people don't actually know what they believe. Right, right. Or, or, or I mean, what they profess. Right. Uh, they've not been indoctrinated they've not loved doctrine they've not learned love teaching and, and grasping the principles and precepts uh, that uh, belong to Christianity and so uh, to catechize uh, to ask those questions and find out what uh, where people are in their belief system is really important because it's so so often that we run into people who are is or somebody else that have uh, that have been uh, died in the wool Baptist folk, and then they finally said, "Well, I finally got saved." Or I finally what? What do you mean? If you really knew what you believed before, you should have already been a born again believer based upon your relationship to Jesus Christ and not anything else. And so, uh, it's really important that we understand uh, what uh, Christianity. Uh, parallels the life from the city of destruction to celestial city and and the beauty of it is this uh, no matter where you are along the road of life you're never alone and you and I have to understand that we're never alone and God uh, demonstrated that throughout Christian's journey no matter uh, what he had to uh, be confronted with or what he had to uh, battle with or struggle through there was always help for him uh, in those situations and so you and I uh, the value of the book helps helps us to understand God will never leave us nor forsake us he's always there his eyes are over the righteous his ears are open to our cry and so we can walk this walk uh, with great confidence uh, and, and Apostle Peter says cast not away therefore your confidence which have great recompense of reward we will receive the glory of the Lord uh, at that day, but along the road as well. And so I want you to be encouraged, uh, uh, no matter where you are along the road of life now, uh, you're still uh, being carefully looked after by Heavenly Father, and he'll continue to look after you all along the road of, of, of your human experience until you behold him face to face. And so that's the, that's the beauty of the book, the value of the book, and uh, we're seeing them now being uh, outfitted and equipped uh, at this particular juncture in their journey. All right. Okay. Uh, and I did have a note at this, at this particular place. Uh, uh, like you said, uh, we need to know what it is we, we believe. And I just had a question. Can we answer uh, or give reason for the hope that we have? Can we, yeah. can we explain it you know, to and, somebody? And so... That's Apostle true. Peter raised that, you know, encouraged people to be able to give an answer to anybody that answered or requ required of them the reason for the hope that was in them. And that, that's mm -hmm. exactly right. Uh, thank you for sharing that because that, that's right there. Yeah. Christiana gave her free consent, 
So she began with the youngest, whose name was James. Come, James, said Prudence, can you tell me who made you? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, answered James. Very good, young man, said Prudence, and can you tell me who saves you? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, answered James once more. Good again, said Prudence, but how does God the Father save you? By his grace, answered James. How does God the Son save you? Asked Prudence. By his righteousness, death, blood, and life, replied James. And how does God the Holy Spirit save you? Asked Prudence. By his illumination, by his renovation, and by his preservation, mm. answered James. <laughs> Woo. Well, well, I mean, that, that's just powerful stuff. Matter of fact, that sounds like preaching fodder to me. By his illumination, illumination. by his preserv uh, what? Renovation. renovation and his preservation. preservation. Man, <laughs> can you, when you renovate a house, when people buy old houses and they're going to flip them, they have to go in and renovate them. They have to go in and tear out all the old stuff and rewire and replumb. And, and re uh, uh, wallboard and everything. They make it brand new, essentially. And that's what this kid is saying. God not only uh, illuminates or brings knowledge to the mind of the whoness and whatness of the Christ, but helps him to understand that he's been transformed from the inside out. And then he preserves him. He keeps him to the day of redemption. I'm telling you. And, and all of us who are in Jesus Christ have been preserved in him. God has moved us from a dying, decaying, uh, destructive world and placed us in the body of Jesus Christ. And there we'll be preserved until the day he comes for us. Amen. Just to go back a little further, she's, uh, he's telling her all, all of the Trinity is involved in our mm. salvation. And so God extended his grace to us. And then uh, Jesus came and put his righteousness on us by his death, blood, and life, his resur the resurrection. And then the Holy Spirit comes in to uh, make us see. And then, like you said, changes yeah, us. And regenerates, then us, yes. regenerates us. Yeah, regenerates us. And then he And all of the things that happened there. We talk about how God the Father drew us, and he did. But, but he drew us by way of the Holy Spirit. He convicted us. By way of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, He uh, baptized us from the world into the body of Christ by way of the Holy Spirit. He fills us by way of the Holy Spirit. He seals us to the day of redemption by way of the Holy Spirit. He empowers us to work ministry by way of the Holy Spirit. I mean, we don't really look at the ministry of the Holy Spirit, and we we kind of you know we measure on the Christ, and we should. And, 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 and on our Father, and we still, but man, what an error it would be for us not to see the power of the Spirit of God and what he's doing. And I pray daily, Lord, and I, I sometimes call him by name, Holy Spirit of God, fill me for this day's journey. Empower me. I don't even know what I'm going to meet this day, but I know I need you to fill me and empower me along the road of life today. Man, I'm telling you, folks, it would be an error. And we don't acknowledge the power and glory of the Spirit of God at work in our lives. I, I'm done. It just, it's just preaching material, man. I'm telling you, it makes you want to tune up a little bit around here. Go ahead. Then Prudence said to Christiana, You're to be commended for bringing up your children like this. I suppose I don't need to ask the rest of these questions since the youngest of them can answer them so well. Therefore, I'll apply myself to Joseph, the next to the youngest. Then she said, Come, Joseph, will you let me test and teach you? Gladly, said Joseph. What is man? asked Prudence. A reasonable creature made that way by God, as my brother said, answered Joseph. What is assumed by this word, saved, she inquired? That by sin, man has brought himself into a state of captivity captivity and misery, said Joseph. What is assumed by being saved by the Trinity, inquired Prudence further. Joseph answered, 
that sin is so great and mighty a tyrant that no one but God can pull us out of its clutches mm. and that God is so good and loving to people as to indeed pull them out of this miserable state. Prudence continued, what is God's design in saving poor people? The glorifying of his name, grace and justice, and the everlasting happiness of his creature, said Joseph. Who are those who must be saved, asked Prudence. Those who accept his invitation, he answered. Very good, Joseph, said Prudence. Your mother has taught you well, and you've listened to what she has said to you. Mm, not that. Sin and being <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. sin. <laughs> that, that was not all of our conditions. Yes. And there's no, listen, there's none, uh, no human being that's living uh, today or in the past or in the future that, have, uh, uh, that can break themselves free of the clutches of sin. I mean, it causes us to, uh, it'll sink us to the lowest hell. And so we need the blood of Jesus to wash us clean. And we need to accept the finished work of Christ at Calvary which uh, gives us deliverance from not only sin, but hell, death, and the grave, and the guilt of sin. Sin carries with it this business of guilt. And, and uh, the beauty of being a child of God is that not only have we been born anew, but the guilt of sin goes away as well. And so we can stand and look people eyeball straight and not have to have any uh, second guesses or anything about where we are along the road of life at that point. Sometimes people won't forgive you. Sometimes people will hold over your head your past. Sometimes people will beat you up or try to with your past. But since you've been born again, since you've been born into the family of God, you don't have to uh, uh, buy into the lie of the devil that you're still where you used to be because you're not. You've been born again. It's a, another chance at living. I'm telling you, God is gracious, and he's done marvelous things for us. And I, I don't know about you, but... Uh, uh, it, it's good stuff for me. <laughs> it, 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 and, you know, I frequently say to people, uh, some folks just came from good families. They just had good upbringing. They never got into the mud pit. Man, I, I, I missed all of that. I, I got into the mud pit. But I thank God for a Holy Ghost shower that'll clean you up and wash you clean by the blood of Jesus and put glory on the inside of you and seal it in there so, it, so the fruit won't spoil. Amen, 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 amen. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. And nine manifestations of the Spirit of God is sealed in us. And it will never spoil. And I'm so glad. Oh, God. Go ahead, baby. I, I feel like a, a, I feel a preach coming on up here today. Oh, God. Then Prudence said to Samuel, the next to the oldest, Come, Samuel, are you willing for me to test and teach you to? Yes, indeed, if you please, answered Samuel. What is heaven, asked Prudence. A place and state most blessed because God lives there, said Samuel. What is hell, she asked. A place and state most wretched because it is the dwelling place of sin, the devil, and death, answered Samuel. Why do you want to go to heaven, answered Prudence. Samuel answered, so I may see God and serve him without weariness, so I may see Christ and love him forever, and so I may have a fullness of the Holy Spirit in me such as I can't enjoy here. Wow. You are a good young man also, responded Prudence, and one, and one who has learned well. You know, Shirley, can I just sure. uh, jump in right here just for a second? At uh, this local assembly, the Ebenezer Missionary Baptist Church, this is the year of the family. This is your year of the family. And particularly, our young people, we're kind of queuing on them. But in order for us to maximize uh, that opportunity, we have, to, we have to minister to our parents. Because it is the parents who are pouring into the children in the home and are... Uh, you know, setting boundaries and, 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 and the structure and the nurturing environment in the home that's going to affect the lives of, the, of their generations after them, their posterity. And so, man, how wonderful it is. I might have to preach part of this 
narrative of this book on a Sunday morning because it demonstrates that Christiana has taken time to impart godly wisdom to her children. I mean, she's taught them. She had to teach them. This stuff don't fall out of the sky. I mean, you can't get it through osmosis. You don't just absorb it. You've got to teach. And, 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 and I've said to our fellowship, it's not enough to live right uh, before your children. You can live it all you want to, but if they don't have the instruction and it's not in their hearts, they're going to miss something. So just living right is not enough. And, or just teaching, just telling them what, if you can tell them all you want to, but if your life doesn't demonstrate what you're trying to teach, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be to no avail. So here's what we have to have. Your walk have to match your talk. You have to first teach and live right before your children and uh, to uh, perpetuate holiness in the earth. Let me say it again. To perpetuate holiness in the earth. The, the principles and precepts of God's word, the doctrine, the teachings of God's word, in order for it to be transferred to the next generation or perpetuated, uh, we have to continue to be clear about what it is we believe and to live out those precepts in our homes, on our jobs, as we go to and forth. In our church, wherever we happen to be at a given moment, we are, our lives ought to smell like heaven. And what I mean by that is uh, the sweet fragrance of the Spirit of God should be manifested in our lives daily. We ought to be winsome in all that we are uh, in every manifestation of how we behave ourselves 24-7. Uh, all right. Then she addressed herself to the oldest, whose name was Matthew. And she said to him, Come, Matthew, shall I also test and teach you? I am most willing for you to do so, said Matthew. Then I asked, began Prudence, if there was ever anything that lived antecedent to or before God. No, said Matthew, for God is eternal, nor is there anything excepting himself that ha had any existence until the beginning of the first day. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them. What do you think of the Bible? asked Prudence. It is the holy word of God, answered Matthew. Is there anything written in it that you, under that you understand? inquired Prudence. Yes, a great deal, said Matthew. What do you do when you come across it in places that you don't understand? She asked. I think that God is wiser than I, said Matthew. I also pray that he will please let me know everything in it that he knows will be for my good. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you believe regarding the resurrection of the dead, asked Prudence. I believe the same people who were buried shall rise, shall rise the same in nature, but not in corruption, answered Matthew. And I believe this for two reasons. First, because God has promised it. Second, because he is able to perform it. Wow, powerful. Yes, but can I, say, um, yes, can I say one of the things that's interesting is uh, him having an attitude of prayer while reading or before reading. Mm -hmm. And so I want to just suggest to us that when we uh, do our daily reading uh, in, our, in our personal devotions, that we ask the Lord to reveal to us his, the meaning of his word in the context of the text so that we can glean and learn and grow and the power of the Holy Spirit can, can illumine, as we've seen earlier, uh, our hearts and our minds when we're reading the word of God. And sometimes... Uh, you know, it, it, we can, we, as we read along, we can just kind of, it can get ho-hum if you're not careful. And not looking at sentence structure, not looking at words, not looking at uh, connecting vowels and verbs and adverbs and watching how the structure of the text is hung together and how it flows from passage to passage, uh, particularly when you're reading the Apostle Paul, because he can go on for uh, a couple of chapters with the same thought. So you, you can get lost in the text if you're not careful. So we have to be prayerful in our reading so that we can go away with uh, the, the intent and purpose of the letter. And then, of course, we have to be careful 
uh, about uh, the art and science of biblical interpretation, hermeneutics, if you will, uh, uh, thinking about uh, who the narrative was written to, what was the purpose of the writing, uh, all of those things when, you, when, when it comes to interpretation. So we have to be careful about that. But um, the, the young man is wise because he's saying God knows everything about what he's written. So it's a matter of uh, allowing him to illumine our minds in that sense. So that's good stuff. You know, you were talking about reading and uh, all that's involved in reading and studying. Yes. Because reading, I will read my Bible every day, but then, you know, what you're talking about, sitting down with pencil and paper and looking at how it's hung together, that's study. Right. And so I think we need to take, we, we should read every day and pray that, yes. you know, as we're reading, God would give us something. But you know, if we really want to dig deep on a certain chapter or a certain point or a certain uh, in the lesson, and that that calls for, like you said, that study, sit down mm -hmm. with pencil and paper, and who and what and why and where, and right. you know, what does that mean to me today? So yeah. uh, we should be doing both of those, reading as well as studying, uh, because it would be very hard, admittedly, for me to sit down with pencil and paper every day. And go through, you know, go through that. So, yeah. you know, it, it takes all of it, yeah. all of it in order to really learn. I know sometimes on a, um, during preaching time or I hear somebody speaking about something, I'll write down and take notes and then I have to go back later and, and even look at that. So yeah. a lot of times that's how I process or get to have some study time because it's like, Oh, really? I didn't know that. Or, yeah. you know, if something comes up, then for me, those are times when I, I can have a chance to go and get, dig a little deeper than just reading the passage. I can do a little, you know, a little yeah. more deeper digging and, you know, getting out, uh, getting out of it. So. You know, it's, it's part of our, what is called spiritual disciplines, is to be, uh, uh, to have personal devotions and to have reading time just for the pleasure of reading the glory of mm -hmm. particularly the Old Testament economy man you can see the flow of how God used people and how all he painted them in the narratives or in the text in the scriptural text with all of their spots and wrinkles mm -hmm. it they they were human beings like us mm -hmm. and and uh, uh, you know the the in the New Testament economy uh, 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 James says that uh, of Elijah, that he was a man of like passions as we are, even though he was a prophet of God and prayed that it wouldn't rain. And it didn't rain on the earth for three years and six months. I mean, it's amazing. And then he prayed again and, and rain came. So, but, but he said he's a man of like passion. He's just, he was just flesh and blood like us. But God used him. And so uh, to have that kind of an understanding that these people uh, that came before us and that the, the narratives are there, for us to glean from, and I and I use this verse all the time, Romans 15, 4, whatsoever things are written aforetime, written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So we, we can gain much and glean much, but it calls for a measure of discipline. It calls for a measure of discipline. And one of the things we hope to uh, help people drill down on when they come become parts of this uh, part of this local assembly is to go through discipleship training where they meet the Lord every day, same place, same time, and start to build up a habit of personal devotion. So it's, it's good stuff that we do that because it helps uh, people to learn to walk in the same way uh, others who have come before them walk here in this local assembly. So uh, that's, that's, that's all good stuff, surely. Really good stuff. Yes. yes. I, I, okay, go on. I just, uh, he believes, uh, Matthew, this is powerful stuff, like you said, two reasons why he believes that the buried will be, will raise again is because God promised it. Yes. And not only that, he's able to perform it. <laughs> and he's, we know that he's able to perform it because Jesus did. Yeah. And so, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I it was that. Yeah, well, if you weren't going to do it, I was. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I saw that. Amen. Yeah. He, what he's promised, he's also able to perform. Right. Absolutely. Right. He already, Amen. He did. He, he demonstrated it. He demonstrated it through Jesus. You know, we, we, frequently I talk about that, about how 
the larger life is beyond the veil of death. Well, and it's because God has already demonstrated that to us in the person of the Christ. Not only that, but uh, Moses and Elijah appearing upon the mountain of transfiguration, meeting with Jesus, giving him further instructions about what's getting ready to happen when he comes off the top of the mountain and go down to the valley again. He's a figuratively standing in the shadow of the cross. He's getting ready to experience his passion and, and, and the purchase of our salvation. I mean, it's awesome. And, and so uh, the law is represented in Moses uh, and the prophets are represented in Elijah. And that is the fullness of the scriptural text at that point uh, in the New Testament economy. It's awesome stuff. Yeah, yeah. All right. And because, because I believe this, then it makes me continue my journey. Yes. It makes me, uh, no matter what comes up, because I believe this is going to be me, that there's something, like you said, larger, uh, the larger life is beyond here. But it encourages me when I know this, when I believe this, mm. when I know this, mm. when I know this is what's going to happen, then yeah. it continues, uh, it, it helps me to continue this journey, no matter what's going on right. uh, along the way, no matter what trials or giants or you know, little other people trying to discourage me. It's like, no, I have a goal in mind, and it's real right. because because it happened. God said it; He did it already, and yes. so it's going to happen for me. So uh, it it helps me to continue on um, this way. Yeah, and, that, and 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 that's the beauty of the book, right. actually, to help us to uh, be encouraged, be encouraged, get a handle on. Uh, What's going on along the road of life? It's all right. It's the way of all Christians. It is. Absolutely it is. <laughs> then Prudence said to the Pastor, boys. You, yes. I just wanted to make a comment before you got too far away from that. I like what Samuel said too. Okay. Prudence asked him, well, if you want to go to heaven. Yes. And uh, uh, Samuel said that he wanted to see God and to serve him without weariness. Yes. He also said that uh, that he might see Christ and love him everlasting. Yes. That I may have that fullness of the Holy Spirit in me that I can cannot have. Absolutely, it is. And that, that's that's a part of the joy of the believer down here on the ground and the hope of the believer down here on the ground to uh, look forward to, uh, be, to knowledge, to know as we are known and to be uh, like uh, the other incredible beings that are already in glory. I'm telling you, there's others who've gone on before us that's enjoying the majesty of God. And we'll join them in that great cloud of witnesses <laughs> One of these old days. <laughs> Thanks, Carol. Thank you so much. All right, babe. Then Prudence said to the boys, you must still listen to your mother, for she can teach you more. You must also diligently give ear to what good talk you'll hear from others, for they speak good things for your sake. Also caref carefully observe what the heavens and the earth teach you, but especially be much in meditation of that book that was the cause of your father becoming a pilgrim. Mm. For my part, my children, I'll teach you what I can while you're here, and I'll be glad if you'll ask me questions that tend towards godly edifying. Mm. Now, seeing these pilgrims had been at this place a week, Mercy had a visitor who pretended good intentions towards her. His name was Mr. Brisk a man of some breeding who pretended to be religious, but who stuck very close to the world. So he came once or twice or more to Mercy and offered love to her. Now Mercy was of a fair appearance and therefore all the more alluring. It was also her mind to be ever busying herself with doing things, for when she had nothing to do for herself, she would make stockings and garments for others and would give them to those who had need. And Mr. Brisk, not knowing where or how she disposed of what she made, seemed to be greatly impressed, for he 
never found her idol. I'm sure she would be a good housewife, he said to himself. Mercy then revealed the business to the girls who were of the house and inquired of them concerning him, for they knew him better than she. So they told her that he was a very busy young man and one who pretended to be religious but was, as they feared, a stranger to the power of that which is good. Wow. Mm. How, 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 how much of a admonition is that for, for us today? There are people uh, who have ill intentions or uh, or uh, uh, perceiving that the place to go for a wife or a husband is to the household of faith. I mean, folk don't want to marry uh, folk or hang out with folk forever that they find at 6902. They, 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 want, they want, listen, when you get ready to drop anchor with somebody, you want that which is best. So you go to, you go to the church house to get them. And, and I'm telling you, uh, both men and women have to be wise enough to recognize that just because somebody goes to church don't mean that they've been born into the family of God, have the love of God in their hearts, and are willing to live according to the principles and precepts of God's word. And I'm telling you, you drop anchor in that, you can get yourself in a real mess that will be misery for years to come. So be very careful about that. Be very careful about that. No, then, said Mercy, I'll not see him anymore, for I aim to never have an obstruction to my soul. Mm. Prudence then told her there need not be any great matter of discouragement given to him, for her continuing the things she had begun to do for the poor would quickly cool his courage. And this is funny because when I uh, first read that, quickly cool his jet is the word that popped in my head. <laughs> His jets. I'm gonna cool his jets. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> would quickly cool his courage. So the next time he came, he found her at old work of making things for the poor. Then he said, What? Always at it? Yes, said Mercy, either for myself or for others. And what can you earn in a day? asked Mr. Brisk. Then Mercy answered, I do these things to be rich in good deeds and to lay up treasure for myself as a firm foundation for the coming age so that I may take hold of the life that is truly life. Why, pray tell, questioned Miss, Mr. Brisk. What do you do with them? Clothe the naked, she answered. With that, his expression fell. So he stopped coming to see her, and when he was asked the reason why, he said that Mercy was a pretty girl, but troubled with ill conditions. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What you mean? <laughs> ill conditions. I mean, serving a true missionary, right. somebody who's using her time, a talent, and a treasure to be a blessing to those who are less fortunate, yes. to him. Because his mind was in the world, actually, uh, and looking for riches and this world's goods. And you know what the you know what the writer John, the beloved disciple, wrote in First John chapter two, verses fifteen, sixteen, seventeen says, "Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that's in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life." He says, "It's not of the Father, but is of the world." And the world passeth away in the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. His mind and his desires were of the world system. So when she, somebody he was interested in, were, was about doing that which is beneficial to the less fortunate, uh, it, it turned him off. He cut his wheels and went the other way, which is really good for her. And she... <laughs> And she, the thing is that's amazing, she sought the counsel of those who knew him better than her, which is a really good thing. We have to be wise enough to uh, seek wise counsel uh, when we're uh, uh, getting ready to cause our, allow our hearts to be affected, contrary to the direction that we're going. And so wisdom is justified of her children, the word of God says. Amen. When he had left her, Prudence no says, money. didn't I tell you <laughs> that Mr. Prudence... <laughs> 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 You're right. 
for those of you who may not have heard, I'm glad, I'm sure you did. She, Carol says that if he ain't making no money, he need to find somebody else that he is to shack up with. So <laughs> that's amazing. All right. <laughs> when you had left her, Prudence says, didn't I tell you that Mr. Brisk would soon forsake you? Yes, he'll raise up an ill report of you, for in spite of his pretense towards religion and his seeming love for mercy, yet mercy and he are of such different dispositions that I believe they'll never come together. Wow. I, I could have had husbands before now, although I didn't speak of it to anyone, said Mercy, but they were such as didn't like my conditions, even though none of them found fault with my person. So they and I couldn't agree. Mercy in our days is valued little beyond its name, said Prudence. There are only a few who can endure the practice set forth by the conditions. Mm -hmm. Well, said Mercy, if nobody will have me, I'll die unmarried, or my conditions will be to me like a husband. For I can't change my nature, and I purpose to never, as long as I live, allow myself to have one who lies crosswise to me in this. Mm. I had a sister, Bountiful, and she was married to one of these rascals. He and she could never agree. But because my sister was resolved to do as she had begun, that is, to show kindness to the poor, her husband therefore first verbally abused her and then threw her out of his house. Mm. Yes, said Prudence, and yes, I'll assure you he professed religion and compassion. Yes, agreed Mercy, he did. The world is now filled with such as he, but I want none of them. Okay, we'll have to stop there. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to stop there for today. I want none of them. Okay. We will, uh, we will shut it off there. We're almost down to the bottom of the hour. We are grateful for all who uh, tuned in today. Ira, it's good to see you at home, brother. Praise the Lord for you. We've been having a lot of trouble t today. Can y'all hear? Yeah, we can hear you. I'm asking you on mute. Hold on. Oh, wait a minute. No, I think I okay, there we are. We, we were muted. Okay. But yeah, yeah, Carol, we can hear. And, and I'm asking everybody to... Uh, Keep our lifted up, as well as all of the other names that we uh, read off earlier today. Uh, we're gonna we're down to uh, one minute here, and we thank God for each of you for tuning in. And there are a lot of people who tuned in on Facebook that we didn't get to double back uh, to uh, lift up your names and let you know how much we appreciate you joining us. But please know that uh, we do. We certainly appreciate uh, your coming along with us today. Uh, as well as our Zoom audience, uh, it's a good thing. And I, I, I just rejoice, even on Sunday mornings, I mean, we have a ton of people from multiple states tuning in with us as we uh, navigate uh, the text and as we look at Pilgrim's Progress. It's a glorious book. Uh, and so if you don't have it, pick it up and read it at your own leisure. I think you'll be blessed by it. Uh, I'll go out online and read it there. Download it electronically on your device uh, and just uh, enjoy the beauty of the book. Anyway, we got to back on out of here. We don't have time for a song today. So let me have a word of prayer with you as we go. God, our Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for this time of sharing with your precious people. We pray that you seal in our hearts those things that have been beneficial to us. Thank you for my dear friend Ira Mills and Carolyn, who's uh, standing beside him in the hour of his trouble, and all of the other names that we lifted up before you today. We ask you to just show yourself mighty in the lives of your people. Touch and heal and deliver uh, those who stand in need of it most. We love you for it. And even remember that soul that's nearest hell. Bring them to the foot of the cross that they might say yes to all of your will. We bless you for it now. Ask you to go with us and stand by us and keep us, Lord, till we're able to come together again. In Jesus' great name we pray. Amen. And amen. Praise the Lord for each of you. We bless you. Thank you, Facebook. Thank you, Zoom audience. Hallelujah.